Thank you for joining us today. Today's topic is to do with matric and beyond. That's what I've called it. And you all know where that comes from, but the idea is what do we do with a child who has to choose subjects for grade 10? Do we say that because I'm not an academic, I don't choose subjects and I just drop out of school? Um, what if I'm passionate about something? What if I'm interested in something? What if I'm not? What do we do? And I think tonight we want to explore what subjects we offer at the bridge. We are an assisted learning school, so the idea is we want to help your child to reach matric and then we want to look at what careers would follow that matric. I think that's the focus of this evening's chat. Okay, so we want to talk about the path to matric. So we're talking about a high school and in South Africa we're, traditionally we talk about grade 8 as being the start of high school. At our school we go from grade R all the way through and then we have grade 8 and next year will be our first grade 10s and we're all very excited about that and I will discuss every single subject that is on offer for us. At our school it's a learning assisted school so we're very much about helping your child to achieve whatever their dreams may be. That is the idea. It's a obviously a bright child but with some kind of barrier to learning and our job is to assist that child to reach matric and not just matric so I think often we talk about a matric as being the end of everything we want to get a matric it's not about that it's about what does that matric lead to so what happens if your child isn't a mainstream child and requires more assistance well I can say that at the bridge we would like to help your child and that is the idea all the way through to matric whether it's with accommodations scribes readers extra time whatever the case may be we will assist your child all the way to matric and matric then after matric we're talking about possibly a bachelor's degree pass, uh, we talk about a diploma pass, we talk about a certificate pass, a high certificate pass, all of those will in fact lead to your child qualifying with a matric and then we have pathways to university studies after that, even with a certificate, high certificate pass. For me that's a bridging tool to another level, possibly to study something in a degree level, if that's what the, ch what the child wants to study. I want to tell you about the IEB. So the IEB stands IEB, so it's the Independent Examinations Board, which means an outcome at the end of matric. However, there has to be a syllabus leading up to matric. So everything from grade 10 will be IEB or not. So in South Africa, we have a number of different um, education platforms leading to matric, but we want to do, so you have Cambridge, you have the standard South African curriculum, NSC, and we want to do the IEB. It's, it's, it's the same, but a little different. For instance, English would have different set works and so on, but that's what we want to do. However, whether it's IEB or NSC, it makes no difference. The compulsory subjects in South Africa will be the medium of instruction. So in our case at the bridge, it would be English. And then one additional language, which in our case at the bridge would be Afrikaans. We are offering Isizulu this year as a conversational level. At a conversational level, it's not examinable. So we've got a first language, the medium of instruction, first additional language. And then South Africa says we have to do other maths or maths literacy. So they talk about maths, mathematical core maths, pure maths, whatever you want to call it, or maths literacy. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in detail. And then the last subject that the government enforces for everyone, we have to choose it, is life orientation. Life orientation is to do with your child learning skills of the world. And that's really what it's all about, all the way to matric. And it's a subject that we have to follow. All right, let's talk about maths literacy. As I said, I really love the subject. It's to do with learning about the world around you. And, and we all need maths literacy as far as I'm concerned. It's about interest rates. Who doesn't want to know what the interest rate is or why am I getting so much return on my money or why am I paying so much for my bond on my house? We need to know. And so it's not just interest rates. It can be adding up a budget, working out a budget. It can be many, many things. And I, I think our children all need those skills as they go along. So, but we do offer core maths. It's not a problem. There will be a criterion set. In other words, at the end of grade seven, if your child uh, has mastered the maths curriculum across the board, then we will set a certain criterion. And if your child is strong enough, 
uh, reaches that criterion, then we will do core maths if you choose to do that. If not, we will do the maths literacy. Okay, so one of the aspects to do with maths core, if you want to call it that, and maths literacy, is that a child is able to change. Say your child reaches a criterion for at the end of grade nine, and you decide, and the child decides, let's do core maths. And at the end of grade 10 or during grade 10, you decide you'd like to change, you're welcome to do that. And then we will swap over to the maths literacy side. What we can't do is swap the other way around. We can't go from maths literacy to core maths. And you can understand that you've missed out on, on a massive part of the curriculum and it will be very, very difficult to catch that up. And I would say if it's every couple of months, sure. But after that, it will become really too difficult to do. At the bridge we also want to do tourism and tourism is a very very important part in fact it's one of our compulsory subjects and the reason for that is every child needs to understand about our country what we have to offer and what the world has to offer so it's very very important for us in terms of discovering so the child will discover everything about our country and it's about whether it's game parks whether it's the beaches whether it's our countryside whatever the case is and lots of people I want to say hundreds of thousands come from overseas to our country and they want to explore our natural resources across the board. And I think for our children it's very, very good to discover that. It leads to many job opportunities. It's one of the largest industries in South Africa. Um, mining, I think, and, and tourism is, is a massive part of, of the income into the country. So we need to know that and, and I think our children need to explore that very, very well. So we've made it one of our compulsory subjects as well. So if you think back, we said English, Afrikaans, math or math literacy, LO, and then tourism will be our, our core subjects that we go along. And then we have massive choices and we'll talk about some of those choices now. I want to talk a little bit about visual art. Uh, everyone understands what that is. I think we're talking about paintings, drawings, and so on. It's, it's visual perceptual art. So the idea is to be able to have an eye for those kinds of things. And I think at our school, we are very blessed in that we have many, many artists. And I think ultimately they will choose visual art as one of their subjects for matric ultimately because it's about when you talk about art it's about music it's about drawing it's about many things but in this case we're talking about visual art and a child builds up a portfolio over time they do certain paintings and drawings and so on and that way we're able to measure does that child have talent and ability of course you need talent and ability. You can learn as you go along. An aspect of the visual art is also art history. So we can learn that. And we can learn how to draw or what is the easiest way to do certain things. We can do that as well. But I would assume that the child would have need to have some kind of a talent or some kind of a background or some kind of a history in terms of visual art in order to choose visual art as one of their subjects. Visual arts also develops fine motor coordination and, and you can understand that if we're using a brush or we're using something. And remember, visual arts is all visual arts. So it's painting, drawing, sculpting even. So you use your hands to make something or do something. That's all part of the syllabus that a person would, would uh, build up over a period of time. So visual art is, is, is meant for the child who needs to express some kind of creativity in some way. Um, and if they're not verbal, then this is their way of expressing that creativity. One of our other subjects, choice subjects, is business studies. And for me, it's a very, very important study for a child of South Africa. I think we need to be more entrepreneurial in terms of our style and our approach towards things. So we need to know how to run a business. What is the income? What are we paying for certain things? What is the profit margin? How are we doing things? And I think that's what business studies will teach all our children. We do it to a certain extent. Um, we call it EMS and we do it up until grade nine. And the idea is for a child to be able to, and we do a couple of these market mornings where a child buys certain things and then sells them for so much and we have a certain profit. But this is at another level, obviously, all the way to matric. And I think it's, it's very, very important for our, everyone to be able to understand these kinds of things. And, and it's gonna become more and more important in the future where you have to look after yourself and you're not necessarily part of a corporate situation um, and you're running your own business, you need to have all these skills. So I believe it's a very, very important subject as well. Um, at our school, we will offer it and we will have top class people doing those lessons for your child. 
All right, one of our other subjects is hospitality studies. And so if you think back from when you were a child maybe, or when you were at school, you would have done a thing and they did a thing called domestic science, or they did, you know, where it's basically cooking. And so, but this is a little bit more than just cooking. So an aspect of hospitality studies is cooking, and we will have all the relevant ovens and stoves and so on. That's not a problem, it will be there. But it's hospitality studies. Now, if you think of that, it's about hosting a particular situation, a meeting, possibly an evening whatever the case is so our children need to learn those skills as well but it is also a create creative skill and we want the child to be able to create in that environment as well and if you think of all the programs on TV to do with cooking and skills obviously I think it's a very important part of of the world at the moment and for every single person to be able to pick up these skills I think is important it's another one of our subject choices Okay, so another aspect is computer applications technology, commonly referred to as CAT, and that's to do with all sorts of computer applications. So they may be the popular ones, like the Word or the, or the, or the spreadsheet or emails or whatever the case is, but a child, at the end of matric, will be able to manipulate all of those documents very, very, very well. Now, most of us have learned as we've gone along and we just do it, but there's so many things and, and I've been amazed when somebody actually knows what they're doing and they show me, they say, well, yes, shortcut, do this, do that. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. And, and I think our children will learn those skills as they go along all the way to matric, whether it be spreadsheets um, for Word documents um, or, whether, or whatever it is. It'll be something to do with computer applications technology and I think in today's world it's vital so for me that's one of the subjects you should choose in fact now that I think of it you should choose all the subjects that we've spoken about but of course you can't do that so every child has to only choose seven in total so later on you'll see a little slide where we've spoken about the different subjects and of each group that you can choose in order to form a com combination for your child from a trick. But, but yeah, it's difficult because if you think of it, we should do computers, we should do cooking training with its hospitality, we should do visual art, we should do all of these things. You know, these, these are things that we should do, but obviously you can only choose three. And that's ultimately gonna be your choice in conjunction with your child. What are my subjects? What am I gonna choose? What am I interested in? What am I passionate about? What am I not interested in? I'm definitely not doing that subject because I don't wanna know nothing about computers. Okay, then we choose something else. But that's the key. You and your child will make that decision together. Okay, so we wanna talk about specific choices. And, and at our school, it's very much about the individual. One child is not the same as another, and their passions or their interests would not be the same. So we wanna talk about what is suitable for your particular child, what they like to do, what they don't like to do, and then ultimately to choose subjects according to that. So it's specifically for that child. We will have all the subjects that we've spoken about, and those will lead to ultimately things like Vega. I'm sure you've all heard of Vega, so it's, a, it's, it's a tertiary study institution for children that have some kind of creative ability whether it's art or whether it's filmmaking whatever the case is so there's that and that's also part of our group so I think we have very much you know good connections with them so Vega is one of them capsicum is another so capsicum is is the I don't know, the tertiary, edu tertiary, I don't know what you call it, institution for a child who wants to go further with cooking to become a chef or, or that kind of thing. And again, we have very close connections with them. And then there's a thing called Varsity College. And I remember our CEO, Roy Douglas, who's the CEO of the whole of Avitech, he spoke about the idea that varsity and college is almost the same thing. But the idea is it will ultimately lead to the possibility of a degree study if you want to in a particular field or um, let us not place lawyers and doctors and engineers above everyone else it's really all the same and i think all our children need to study something at some point after school it's not enough to get matric we need to follow that up so whether it's vega capsicum varsity college whatever the case is they need to follow that up and we will have close connections from our school onto those tertiary educations uh, for me we're going to have a look at a table just now for your child to be able to choose between the different subjects you know what we offer now and then we can look at the choices that your child needs to make
I'd love to meet with you and your child at some point and to talk about the future because that was the whole point of tonight's talk was about the future. So it's about choosing a subject, that's the future. It's about what happens after matric, that's the future. So I'd love to meet with you and your child to talk about your child's individual particular future. What are we talking about? What, what is interesting? What is a passion? We want to talk about that. So we are definitely going to do that at some point and I would love to meet both you and your child at some stage and I'll always have time for you. Don't worry about that. We will make a plan definitely to talk about your child's individual needs. So we're talking about different subject choices ultimately and I think you've got a good idea of the subject choices at the bridge where we want to assist your child to reach a matric level. And whether that be at a bachelor degree pass level, whether it be at a diploma level, whether it be at a certificate, high certificate level, makes no difference to me. Ultimately, it's about what comes after that. For me, reaching matric is a very important step, but it is just a step to the future for you and for your child. I think that's one of the things that keeps me up at night. What, is, what are my children going to do? What are they going to study? Are they going to do something? Are they going to make a name for themselves? Are they going to be able to be independent? And I think at the bridge, we can at least give you that peace of mind to say, at school, we will guide them, we will help them, we will assist them. That is our job, always. Hi, welcome to The Bridge, where we believe in excellence in education. Choosing the right school for your child is a very, very important decision to make. And I think it's very important that the teachers in a school like ours can meet the child where they're at, as opposed to expecting the child to rise to the level that the teacher is teaching at or where the rest of the children in the class are working and that just allows the child to gain confidence and to, at the end of the day, see what they are capable of doing. Here at The Bridge, we acknowledge that all learners have unique learning barriers. We pride ourselves in ensuring that their programs are individualised to best suit their needs. I came to The Bridge because sometimes I struggled a little bit with school and it's helped so much coming to The Bridge, it's worked so much more. One of the topics that is a major part of what we do at the, at the bridge is neurodiversity. It means it is not a weakness, it is a difference. And that may be sometimes just anxiety. So a child is extremely bright, but anxiety is overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. So the child is able to verbally say things, but when they have to do examinations, they have problems. And so we are here to, to help with that. Occupational therapy is not only done individually, it's also integrated into our classrooms and our schooling environment. We do this by assisting with seating adaptations in the classroom, arranging stimuli so that it's not overstimulating for the children, um, providing alternate seating arrangements, suggesting and recommending sensory or movement breaks for children, and assistive devices. This integration in the classroom, along with our integration in multidisciplinary feedback meetings, allows for good carryover for the children, not just individually, but in their lives and in all environments. Occupational therapy aims to empower our kids um, to overcome barriers in their lives so that they can live better and do more things um, in their everyday life. So in the school environment that looks like helping them with their fine motor skills, their gross motor skills, their perceptual skills and their sensory system so that they can engage um, effectively in an academic environment. At the bridge, the speech therapy department works together with the teacher to implement various strategies into the classroom to aid in the development of your child's speech and language. For example, when it comes to articulation goals, the teacher is trained on modelling the various articulation errors or corrections to your child. When it comes to auditory processing, the techniques required to facilitate the goals and to, aim to achieve those auditory processing goals are also modelled to the teacher. When it comes to language goals, drop-in sessions are done in the classroom to ensure the comprehension and carry over our speech therapy language goals. At the Bridge School we work primarily on speech sound disorders. This looks like a waf or rrr, or maybe they're having a difficulty with the lisp. We also work on auditory processing skills. These are children that need help with listening tasks, so word discrimination, sentence recall, word recall, and their auditory working memory. We also work on language skills. This includes receptive language. Can they understand instructions and can they understand what you are telling them? 
we also work on expressive language. This is how the child will communicate their needs and wants to you. These all just help the children work within their academic environment effectively. At the Bridge School, a close relationship between teachers, parents and therapists is crucial. We work together as a team to ensure that what is done at school is followed through at home. This ensures the best for our students. The first time I joined school I was nervous, scared, but after a time I got used to the people, made friends. When I came to the Bridge, I made friends quickly because I expressed my feelings and I wanted everyone to know what my personality was like and it was very fun and it still is fun and I enjoy being at school. I've made a lot of friends at the bridge since I just came in grade six because most of us have the same interests. At the bridge we offer many cultural activities for our children. Some of these include the Asted Fit, dancing, drama and arts. We also have music, chess, and yoga. We feel that it is important to have a well-rounded child here at the bridge. Therefore, we encourage each learner to take part in at least one extracurricular activity per term. These sports include soccer, swimming, tennis, netball, athletics, and cross country. When I joined the bridge school, my academics got better because of the teachers helped a lot to improve my marks. I love my LO, natural science and English teachers because they all make the lesson fun and they make it easy for us to understand. Almost every single parent I talk to talks about robotics and coding. So we do it as, as an extramural and we also do it in terms of our computer lessons at the school. We are very lucky in that at the bridge we are able to grow the campus and we are able to expand and we will be all the way to matric. We will need specific facilities for our matric students and grade 11 students and grade 10 students. We are wanting to follow the IEB curriculum and we will have a range of subjects which will empower the child to pursue the education they want to after matric. 